Um, all right, so I think everyone would like to know what your experience um, with games is so far, like both of your past with designing and, I guess, managing and, and things of that sort. Yeah, uh, sure, I'll take that one. Pedro and I have sort of gone through some of the things and, and allocated them. So for this one, uh, we have a lot of experience making games. Pedro and I worked together at Playfish as well as about 12 other people at Space 8 before this. Playfish uh, was a social gaming developer in the early days of Facebook, what they call canvas gaming. So uh, mm -hmm. we made games like Pet Society, Restaurant City, and later The Sim Social. They were three of the biggest games on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, before that, I worked at PlayStation. Before this, you worked at Jagex. Jagex and other places. Right. Yeah. I'd say in general, the company, uh, we are about 18 going on 25 folks. On average, we have 8 to 10 years experience in games apiece. Wow. Uh, on average, we're about 28 to 32. I've got a little gray hair, so I'm not old, <laughs> not by much. Um, and we've all played games since we were little kids, probably like you and your viewers. And mm -hmm. uh, we just got blessed to be able to make them for our careers. Yeah. So we have a ton of experience. Um, I'd say where we're strongest is making free-to-play online games yeah. um, of this sort. And we've just got a lot of experience making them and operating them. Uh, and, and we feel that a game like Samurai Siege really allows us to do what we do best. Mm -hmm. We think it in the product. Awesome. Um, well... Uh, along those lines, what made you go with this style of like strategy game? I know strategy games are huge right now. Um, so what made y'all really want to um, pursue this exact type of game? Sure. Um, we started the company about a year ago, and we had a vision then to make one of the world's biggest mobile gaming companies. And it was a vague vision uh, and built around the idea of, of having just a hugely talented team uh, that worked well together. We spent a few months making a game that was actually totally different than this. It was a sports-based game mm -hmm. that you play while watching uh, live football on television. And about four months into that game, we, we had a, a collective epiphany. We realized that A, as novel and as exciting as that game was, it wasn't performing that well. And that B, we weren't passionate about it. We were going home at that time in a, in a bit of a StarCraft II phase in our company culture. We were all playing StarCraft II mm -hmm. in the office at home at night, a bit of a resurgence. And we just sort of realized that A, we're making this game we're not passionate about, B, that our passions were in strategy gaming. Yeah. And C, that strategy games were doing so well on tablet and mobile. And so we made a decision in January of this year to just change everything. We dropped the football game uh, we all started working on strategy games and and by the end of that month we had kicked off Samurai Siege we actually prototyped a few other types of games we prototyped one that was similar to the trading card games you see on mobile these days mm -hmm. we didn't really feel we understood it uh, we use unity which is amazing it lets you quickly build prototypes a wonderful platform that we use to make Samurai Siege but uh, it just didn't feel the magic with that prototype. But then we made a, an early draft of, of Samurai Siege. It didn't involve samurais. It involved small gray boxes attacking <laughs> gray box towers. And, but it had all the metagame features in there that we liked, and it just worked out really well. Yeah. Uh, so we committed to it at that point. We, we felt like it was a combination of having team passion for strategy games, but mm -hmm. also being something that would do well in the marketplace. Uh, I guess speaking personally, I view myself as more of an entertainer than an artist. Yeah. Both types exist in gaming. Uh, artists are people that make art for themselves, or in gaming they make games for themselves. They're, they're common in the indie marketplace. And entertainers are people who get satisfaction from making games that as many people as possible will enjoy, or art that as many people as possible will consume. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think we are a company full of entertainers, and we just felt this was the best way to make a thing that as many people as possible would enjoy. Yeah. Including well, ourselves. Including ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. That's always the best kind of... Um, job is when you feel like you're not going to work. <laughs> um, so I guess um, along those lines of the popularity of strategy games, I know a lot of you seen the comments and comparisons of y'all to other strategy games just like this. Um, I see the differences. A lot of people don't. So how would you defend yourselves um, against other games that are along the same kind of style? Um, you know, just how, how what, what, what makes you different from those, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. I think the first point is that we're not shy about this topic at all. Uh, the game you're talking about is Clash of Clans. <laughs> so we hugely admire them as a company. Uh, 
In fact, they, there was just this huge announcement this morning that's going all over Twitter that uh, SoftBank acquired them for $1.5 billion. So wow. not only do we love their games, but they've been hugely successful as a company. Um, we have some shared connections with them. So we think in particular, what I think is great about Clash of Clans is the production values. It was really impressive. In, in It's just smooth experience from end to end. We have taken that game uh, and a few others that inspire us. Backyard Monsters really pioneered the genre on Facebook. Yep. Galaxy Life really tried to make it more accessible and introduced it to tablet. Uh, and before then, we, we personally looked at the Blizzard series of Warcraft and Starcraft games, oh, yeah. RTS games. But, but certainly Clash would be the biggest source of inspiration. Um, and we talked to players of that game. We played it intensely ourselves. We played Backyard Monsters intensely. We decided to, to make a game that was like that, but different in three critical areas. Uh, the first is a single player experience. Mm -hmm. We built a really cool world, uh, both beautiful in its art, but also we think it's a fun, interesting story that unfolds over many months. And I think it's a difference that's subtle to, a, say, a game reviewer who hasn't a lot of experience with the, the genre, but noticeable to a person who does, which is we unlock or what we call unfold content very differently. Yeah, definitely. Uh, every player in Samurai Siege has to go through a single player experience that consists of hundreds of missions that Pedro has designed with some help <laughs> uh, to unlock content, to get, a, to get a new tower, to get a new troop. What is powerful about this is first, it's fun and interesting. Second, it uh, is a great onboarding ramp for a player who might be intimidated by player versus player combat. Yeah. But third, it prevents a, a major form of I won't call it hacking, but I think soft cheating, and that is that in our game, a person with $1,000 can't show up and two minutes later be at the top of the leaderboard. Yeah. Everyone, whether they spend or don't, and we respect both players, has to go through the same single player experience, mm -hmm. which slows them down and we think levels the playing field, which is really important to us. So that's thing one, is a single player experience. Uh, thing two are alliances. Alliances are similar to clans in uh, Clash of Clans, or legions in Total Conquest, or guilds in World of Warcraft. Very common old idea that we like. Mm -hmm. uh, they say, come for the game and stay for the community. But we made our game different in that we, we provided a lot of things for people in their alliances to do. Uh, the, the most successful two I'll cite, uh, first are Alliance Wars, which are hugely popular. Yeah. I think Pedro's going to talk about them in a little bit here. Okay. Um, but they give a so what to being in an alliance. They, they're a common cause that for 12 hours people can rally around together to defeat another alliance. And, and the summary is, uh, an alliance general or shogun can choose to go to war. We match make that alliance with a similar alliance, uh, and we put four of them basically in a Thunderdome. Uh, and unlike the Thunderdome, four teams enter one leaves, <laughs> and the winner gets a bunch of diamonds. So not only is it fun and rallies the team up, but uh, there's a cool new way of getting premium currency, and a significant yeah. amount of it versus just getting extra potions. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the third and the final way that our game is different is one that is just now revealing itself to the players, and that is our technology. Uh, we use a, a very cool 3D engine called Unity, mm -hmm. uh, and we have a very sophisticated server infrastructure backing it in the cloud. What it means is that we can move very quickly, and we can deliver Samurai Siege to multiple platforms at once. So you'll notice that the game is available on Android, that yep. we launched globally on Android the same day as Apple. Uh, that's our technology at work. And the way that this is going to benefit the players is it means that we can roll out features very quickly and we can be very, very responsive to users. Um, it's just a lot easier for us. And so you'll see over the next six months, our game both get a lot better, we've got some cool stuff planned, and also get a lot different from the other games of the genre. It's mm -hmm. going to diverge over time. I think maybe one last quick point is, is an area that we like to differentiate ourselves, just historically when we've worked together, is we're focused on players. And we learned that on Pet Society and later Sim Social. We're going to develop new content and features for Samurai Siege that appeals to all stripes of players, mm -hmm. whether they're brand new to the game and we're trying to make it easier to learn, or they've been in the game for months and we're giving them new things to do. We're really trying to appeal to everyone. Um, there's a danger in our industry of just focusing on spenders, and we're going to yeah. avoid that. Of course, spenders are valuable to us. <laughs> we're not going to kid you. We make money that way. Yeah. But we think the community is the most important thing, and a vibrant community is a, is a good business as well as a good game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, well, along those lines of the community, like, um, 
what kind of goals do you have in, in the social aspect of the game progressing? Because I know right now there's Alliance chat, um, and some people have been commenting like, hey, it'd be cool if we could have some friendly trash talk between alliances, uh, or just even global chat. Is there going to be progression with that, or what's the status uh, along those lines? So uh, we're really thrilled that people are really taking to the community aspect of the game so well. Uh, and there's a lot that we want to add to that in the coming updates. Mm -hmm. um, so for instance, the first aspect that we're going to improve and build upon is going to be Alliance Wars uh, by themselves. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of improvements that we're going to make to the future. It's going to be easier for players to understand how different alliances are doing in their wars and how different players are, are doing within that alliance, yeah. how well they're contributing and things like that, which will make the alliances even more alive as little community pockets. Mm -hmm. We're also looking forward into uh, adding some very interesting stuff as far as inter-alliance stuff goes, but it's a little early to talk about that. Yeah, <laughs> I understand I hope, that. I, I, I hope in two updates from now you'll find some very interesting, cool stuff. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, definitely we want to build on that. So as far as f future goes, definitely we're very keen on building a lot on top of community and alliances so they can become even more engaging and people can work together and... Uh, figure out their own tactics mm -hmm. and make their choices. Awesome. Well, along that uh, social aspect, outside of the game, I've noticed y'all growing a lot on Facebook and Twitter and the community is really getting involved. Um, would you say that you're, like, are you where you expected to be at this point? Are y'all growing more? You know, I, I imagine you're pretty excited about the growth, but just talk a little bit about your expectations and um, kind of how your growth has been so far. Yeah, you, you never know what to expect. I, I, I'd say we're beyond our expectations, <laughs> um, but nor have we reached our aspirations. So yeah. it's, it's a high level. We've, we've got nearly a million installs, um, the, the majority of which we've gotten the last 10 days since it's launching globally. <laughs> uh, we've got over 250,000 people playing the game every day. Uh, we're the number one strategy game in about 15 countries, uh, wow. and we're top five in about 50 countries. Um, in the U.S., which is near and dear to my heart as an American, uh, <laughs> we, uh, we've reached 25, uh, top 25 downloads within a week of launch. That's cool. Nice. Um, we've got uh, a, a lot of revenue from the game, which is also interesting. Uh, but I think the single best thing is, is we look at uh, a couple of stats to measure player happiness. We, we look at our review scores. We're averaging four and a half. People are thrilled. Not with everything. Uh, and, and I think those reviews and feedback are one of the places that we learn how to make the game better. Yeah. But for the most part, people seem happy. Uh, and, and secondly, our retention stats are really good. Retention is how we measure if a person comes back. So we, we can, for example, see how many people play today that come back tomorrow, how many people that play today come back seven days from now, and three mm -hmm. days and so forth. And, and that's a very good gauge of whether you've had a good game, right? Oh, um, yeah, definitely. And our retention stats are awesome. We, we've got uh, well over 40% of people who play the game on any given day choose to play the second day. Nice. And... Um, we think we've got a lot of room to improve as well. So I guess way over our expectations, uh, our company's now profitable. We're expanding our team both to make Samurai Siege better, but also so that we can kick off a second project. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of our aspirations, though, I mean, that there's so many success stories in gaming to look up to, and, and we just feel we've just begun. You know, we do have a long-term vision to be one of the world's definitive mobile gaming companies, and, and we are not today. <laughs> Uh, so I, I'd love to talk to you again in six months when we can add zeros next to all these numbers. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah, I always found one of my biggest aspirations that we accomplished through play fish, and, and I have yet to hear is when you encounter somebody in the street or a relative and they tell you about your game and they don't know that you worked on it, it's always a cool feeling. Uh, oh, yeah. And the thing neat about working on mobile is uh, games like Candy Crush Saga, for example, you, you see them regularly when you're on the subway or the bus. Mm -hmm. and I'm looking forward to that moment when we begin to see our game just out there without without our influence. That's going to be really cool. Yeah, that will be awesome. <laughs> um, I guess, Pedro, this is probably a question more directed at you, but um, what, what made y'all go along the lines of the Oriental theme? Um, you know, I've always loved the whole oriental asian style of um design i'm a i'm a graphic designer myself um so what did you um what made y'all go along that that path I, in part i guess you've just answered it's cool <laughs> we, all, we also like it yeah uh, so that's that's one thing that's one element of it um and it the nice thing about that theme is that we we, we try to marry everything that we do both on the intuition side and on the 
viability side of data side. So it was a thing that we liked, I think. Uh, uh, so anyway, we, we, we struck upon it and we're like, this could be cool. And we <laughs> also had like some other three ideas that we thought these would also be cool. We also had some 20 other ideas that we thought, no, these are not cool. Yeah. So we got the ones that we thought were cool and we tried them around and passed them around and we asked people's opinions and we landed on this one. Uh, basically, it gave itself up to the most, you know, uh, most fun, varied experience, uh, we thought, and, and we thought it would resonate with the audience. And I guess it does. So yeah. Well, yeah. It was a little bit different, too. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. That's awesome. Missing. <laughs> Um, I guess along the lines of the game and, and the characters within it, you know, y'all are still um, pretty new to launching global and everything. But um, is there expected progression with troops and all that kind of all that kind of stuff? I know one of my favorite things I've noticed so far is that um, with the I just forgot the name of it. It's not the general. It's like the giant in Clash. What what's it? The commander. Here? Yes, the commander. Um, when I first started deploying it, I got confused because my troops were following it, um, and then I learned that he actually commands them, and that's that's kind of a cool little tie in between the actual troops within the game and their interaction. It's not just you pushing a button and them doing their things. They kind of communicate. Um, so that's been really awesome. I know I'm excited to see um, the progression with the troops. Is there uh, future goals with new troops or, um, I guess, their communication within the game? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we've got a few new troops coming out very soon. In fact, I can tell you right now on the next few troops we're going to put live, uh, by vast request from mm. everybody, every player from every tier, is the Essence Dragon. Mm. Uh, it will make an appearance very, very soon. Awesome. Uh, a device near you. So, uh, <laughs> Android or uh, iOS. Um, <laughs> and it, it will be pretty cool. I, I can't wait to see it in the game. Um, but that one is a, it's a pretty, I guess you could say it's a predictable one because it's cool and dragons are awesome. Right? Mm -hmm. We love some. Uh, we, I know, we do. Um, but you'll also see a lot more troops that have interesting interactions, including the dragon. Um, the way, I, I also, by the way, the commander is also my favorite unit. Mm -hmm. in the game. Uh, especially like things that give you emergent behavior like that. So you can see, you, you can expect to see a lot more of that showing up, both on the attack side and on the defense side. Yeah. Uh, we've got some new defenses coming up at the same time. And something that is interesting also uh, to see is uh, I'd like to see how people are going to use these new defenses. They'll, they'll, they'll bring new skills to the game, make mm -hmm. the combat a little more interesting, a little more complicated at the right levels of progression. Uh, we're also adding them in a way that most people can play with. You know, we're, we're going to try to, with every update, with every major update, do something that's good for everybody across the board, even if it's just a minor feature or improvements or fixes. And then some stuff that's good for mid-level and up, you know, like a new defense that everybody gets, but then some people get it at a lower level, some people get it at a higher level. Mm -hmm. And then they have something that's for the, you know, end game style people, people who are in the higher level so they can play around with something new as well. Yeah. So um, we definitely want, like John mentioned, to, to appeal to every kind, every generation of player yeah. that we add to the game. Definitely. I think that's probably one of the coolest things I've noticed so far is um, that you don't have to spend money to progress. And obviously, y'all are a company, so as you said earlier, like you need those people. But it's good because for those people who don't feel like spending a lot, um, they can play the game. And I think that's probably one of the coolest things that I've been trying to share with people is that as you progress through single player, that's how you get your troops. Like You can't, you can't buy your archers or something. You actually have to play the game in order to get them, which is really, really cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, that's that's pretty much covers the majority of what I wanted to talk about. Do you guys have anything that you want to say to um, the growing community for Samurai Siege? I mean, I'm sure. I, I, I think my, my main one is uh, thank you much, or very much for playing, and uh, we're, we're thrilled you're enjoying the game. Uh, but we're also keen to hear areas that you think could be better. Uh, we know that there's still bugs in the game. Uh, we know that there's this terrible one on Android that involves uh, sort of a corruption of text. I, I can tell you it's going to be gone in a few days. Um, and if you catch other things out there, we, we will fix them as quickly as we can. And if, if you have ideas to make the game better, we will certainly listen to them. We can't accommodate everybody's wishes. Uh, sometimes the feedback is just is impossible. Sometimes it benefits, say, one player to the expense of another. Um, 
Yeah, it's but, but it's all good feedback, and, and we find that our very best ideas usually come from the people who have played the game the most, and, and that's that's you guys. So mm -hmm. uh, just thank you very much for the support, and, and keep the feedback coming uh, over the coming months. Uh, we look forward to, to adding more stuff and seeing more of you play the game. Yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, thank you guys very much. Um, I'm definitely personally excited to see the progression of the game. Um, so you guys... Take it easy, and we'll uh, we'll be looking forward to all the updates and everything. All right. Okay. Cool. Thanks a lot. Thanks. See you guys later.